What's up guys, welcome back. It's time to put the final touches on that Easter dinner menu and I have just what you need. Today I'll be showing you my recipe for lobster mac and cheese. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell, enable notifications as well. All right, moving right along into our starting lineup, we have cheddar cheese, Havarti, boars and garlic and herbs, one of my personal favorites, along with some shredded Monterey Jack and some Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna break out the box grater and grate my own cheese. I suggest you do the same because the store-bought stuff has anti-caking agents like potato starch and things like that that prevent the cheese from clumping together in the bag, which is typically a good thing. However, when you're making a cheese sauce, it prevents your sauce from getting nice and smooth and we don't want any lumps in our sauce. So go ahead and grate that cheese yourself. Put those forearms to work. There we go. Now we're moving on to dicing up our shallot and garlic. If you don't have a shallot, you can always use an onion in place of it. Not going to need a whole lot of it. We're just trying to infuse a little bit of that flavor into our sauce. As always, guys, the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. So don't forget to check that out. I'm going to smash up two garlic cloves here. Give them a nice fine dice so you can break out the garlic press and mince it. Whatever floats your boat. No right or wrong way to do this. You do want to make sure that it's nice and fine though that, that way you don't have any large garlic chunks in your mac and cheese unless that's your thing. Just make sure you have some Listerine on deck. There we go. Moving on to our friends here. We have four lobster tails. These are kind of small so I went with four but you know depending on your serving size you can decide to use a little bit more or less. Also depends on the budget right? We're gonna break out our kitchen scissors and remove the lobster meat from the shell. You can save those shells and freeze them and make an awesome seafood stock with that. So don't throw those things away. Take a nice sharp knife and remove the tail as you see me doing right here. We're gonna use that tail for presentation. There we go, nothing going to waste. And just repeat that process until you've removed all of the lobster meat from the shell keeping the shells for later again for that delicious seafood stock that you're going to make. Go ahead and leave me a comment guys if you plan on making this recipe. If you do, please remember to tag me on Instagram. I absolutely love seeing you guys recreate these dishes. We're going to take our knife now and just cut these lobster tails into bite-sized chunks that we're going to later add to our mac and cheese. Once that's done, set that aside and we're going to go ahead and salt our pasta water. While we wait for that to come to a boil, we're going to begin our cheese sauce. So we're going in with one fourth cup of butter that we're going to melt over medium low heat. To that melted butter, we're going to add our lobster meat and kind of pre-cook the lobster meat a little bit. That's going to allow the flavor from the lobster to infuse itself into our cheese sauce. Absolutely delicious. Tons of flavor packed into this sauce, guys. So we're just going to cook this lobster meat for, you know, about 60 to 90 seconds. Hit it with a little Cajun seasoning, as you see here. There we go. Again, medium low heat. No need to get too hot here. After about a minute and a half, we're going to take our slotted spoon and remove that lobster, leaving behind all the delicious flavor and melted butter. Going in with a little bit more butter, and then we're going to add our garlic and shallot. And give that about 60 to 90 seconds to kind of infuse its flavor into the butter as well. Absolutely delicious roux in the works here, guys. Just to kick the flavor up yet another level, we're going in with one to two teaspoons of better than bouillon lobster base. If you can't find the lobster base, you can use chicken base, vegetable base, whatever else you can find. Next, we're going in with one fourth cup of all purpose flour that's going to effectively create our roux, which is going to be the thickening agent for this cheese sauce for the mac and cheese. We want to cook that for two to three minutes to cook that raw flour taste off. Then we're going in with about a fourth cup of dry white wine just to deglaze the pan. If you don't want to use wine, you can use chicken stock there. And then we're going in with two cups of heavy cream and two cups of whole milk. You want to mix constantly to ensure your sauce stays nice and smooth. You can break out the whisk to ensure there's no clumps. There we go. Keep on whisking. As you can see here, we have a nice smooth consistency and we're going to start slowly incorporating our cheese. You want to do that over low heat. There we go. Slow and steady wins the race here. 
Next, I'm going with two tablespoons of sour cream. Followed by two ounces of boars and garlic and herbs cheese. That stuff is worth its weight in gold, guys. If you haven't tried that yet, definitely pick it up from the grocery store. Now, as you can see, we have our water boiling. We're going in with our elbow macaroni or cavatappi, whatever you decide to use. Once you add the noodles, make sure you stir it immediately to prevent the noodles from sticking together. And we're just gonna boil those noodles to package instructions. Meanwhile, we're gonna finish adding our cheese to the cheese sauce. Again, over low heat here, you don't want the heat to be too hot or your sauce will separate and become kind of oily. And we don't want that. Taste as you go and adjust the season into your preference. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. So don't forget to check that out. And finally, going in with a little cheddar cheese. There we go. That's the smooth cheese sauce we're looking for right there. Going in with a little bit more seasoning, and we're going to add about half of our lobster meat. We're going to reserve half of that lobster meat to top our mac and cheese here in a minute. And now it's time when we really make the magic happen. We've been building flavor every step of the way. We're going to add our cooked macaroni to the pot, pour over that cheese sauce or that liquid gold we just made. Make sure you get in there and taste it one last time so you can adjust the seasoning to your preference. There's no egg included here, so it's safe to taste it throughout. And then you can add as much or as little of that sauce as you want, depending on how thick or runny you want your mac and cheese to be. I like mine somewhere in the middle, so we're going to add a little bit more. Say it with me, guys. Looking good. Should have gave you a little sound on this shot. Going down with one last sprinkle of Cajun seasoning. You can also use a little all-purpose seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, something like that. And now it's time to put it in the oven. So we're going to get our casserole dish ready, fill it up to the top, leave a little bit of space for us to add that lobster meat to the top as well. One pro tip, guys, make sure you put this on a baking sheet. That way nothing spills over and burns up in your oven. That's not fun. We're going to add a few of these lobster chunks to the top just to make sure we have good bites of lobster throughout. We're going to top it with some shredded cheese and none of that breadcrumb nonsense. And then this is going in a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until it's beautifully browned and bubbly. There we go. Got an adequate topping of cheese. Don't forget about those lobster tails that we preserved earlier. That's going to make for a beautiful presentation. So we're going to add that to the edges as you see me doing right here. Nice elegant plating. This is going to take it up another level, give it a nice appearance. Remember guys, you eat with your eyes first. There we go. Now that we've got that out of the way into the oven, she goes. And after about 30 minutes, this is how we look. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Got to hit it with a little chopped parsley for a pop of color. And now all I need is my fork because I have got to dig in and try this. Looks like it's way too hot for the taste test, Matt, but uh, wish me luck. Oh man, this recipe is money, guys. You guys have got to try this. Let me know in the comments if you're planning on making this. And there you have it, guys. That's my recipe for lobster mac and cheese. Don't forget to give your boy a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.